So is Soros regime back? I think we have to use a point of reference here. When we say back, is it back from year one of Destiny 1? Back when Soros was first presented to us and it was absolutely meta? Or are we referring to Season of Worthy when 600 round per minute auto rifles were absolutely destroying Crucible? I would say the year one, the OG version of Soros regime is what is back. Here recently with Sandbox 3.4.0, Soros regime actually got a really big bump in its stats and its zoom. Essentially dual speed receiver receiver mode now grants the following in addition to its current effects plus 30 range and plus three zoom now this was a mode of Soros that many people didn't really entertain as Soros has another mode called spinning up which allows the gun to shoot faster the longer you hold down the trigger this is a little more exciting version of Soros as it starts to clock some crazy speeds starting at a base of 600 rounds per minute cranking up then to 720 after 12 shots and then after 24 shots maxes out at 900 rounds per minute you can understand why Soros regime during the 600 round per minute auto rifle meta was so dang good and it's still good even in this form but limited especially in its range its range in this form starts to receive damage fall off at about 28 meters now with the most recent patch this is Bungie's way of giving this weapon crazy crazy range with dual speed receiver aka focus fire which was essentially what made it so deadly back in year one of destiny one this actually drops the rate of fire of this weapon from a base of 600 to 360 now previously it would run into the same damage fall off as base Soros would at 28 meters, which was terrible. But with the most recent changes, Soros is actually able to hang all the way up to 37, 38 meters before receiving damage fall off. Now this substantially beats other 360s like Age of Bond, False Promises, Blue Perfect, Galleron's Right Hand. The only high impact auto rifle that it does not beat in terms of range is the Half Dan. That's because Half Dan has scopes. But to be perfectly honest with you guys, 38 meters for an auto rifle is fantastic. And for something like Soros here, it is easy easily able to lock down that time to kill a 0.83 seconds due to its consistency and now its range. It's kind of nuts how good Soros feels and we played back and forth between controller and mouse and keyboard and I don't know which one feels better. Controller feels so sticky. Focus fire or dual speed receiver almost feels like it was meant for my controller players. Now a couple of things that are really going to elevate Soros in this department. Number one, a lot of people forget that the bottom half of your magazine deals bonus damage and has a chance to return health on kill. The return Turn health on kill is really noticeable, especially when you're going from gunfight to gunfight. I can't tell you how many times that health regen right there saved my life. And if you remember like OG Vault of Glass back in Destiny 1, Soros quite literally carried me through that raid because of that perk. But the bottom half dealing more and more damage. That's what makes Soros such an interesting auto rifle here, as that damage continually keeps increasing the further and deeper you get into your magazine. Starting off at like 35 per crit, increasing all the way up to like 39 per crit. But just to play it safe, if you were to just nail it down to the final five shots, you can secure a kill on Guardians for resilience or less with just five crits instead of the base five crits, one body. Now, just increasing that damage just by a little bit allows for the weapon to actually achieve a time to kill value of 0.67 seconds. We talk about how deadly Forerunner is. Forerunner is deadly because it achieves a time to kill value of 0.67. We even make comparisons between it and Magnificent Howl on weapons like Luna's Howl and Not Forgotten. Surus here is is able to achieve that, although there is some things you have to do, such as prime the weapon down. I don't necessarily prime the weapon down every single gunfight. It's more or less as I'm getting multi kills, I don't reload. And I know many of us instinctually reload after every single gunfight, and I was doing it too. When you use service regime, especially in its dual speed receiver form, do not reload, guys. I know many of us have used Soros in the past with like spinning up, and you almost have to reload after every gunfight because Soros expends so much ammo. And in that form but i'm telling you right now in this form in that dual speed receiver form it shoots so slow you'll be amazed how often you really don't have to reload and understand guys soros holds 36 rounds so say for instance you do get a couple kills it's a good chance you have enough magazine there to get another couple kills maybe even three more kills in this focus fire form guys you really don't want to reload and i am the worst when it comes to reloading my weapons after every single engagement now soros having that increase there in range is really nice but i will say you gotta have the exotic catalyst to really maintain consistency at those ranges couple things that it does number one it actually increases the chance for your kills to regenerate health and number two it increases your recoil direction by plus 50. and this actually maxes out the recoil direction of Soros, giving us that perfect vertical recoil direction now this is something that i think sub 30 meters is not that big of a deal but when you get past that point you're now dealing with pulse rifles hand cannons and occasional scout rifles 
rifle. Although if it's a dead man's tail, just run. But it's in those ranges that any type of deviation there in your shots, especially in that shot pattern, can really mess you up. You miss a crit, it's no bueno here. This is a slow rate of fire weapon. It's big chungus, so it hits like a truck. But if you miss, due to that rate of fire, it's kind of hard to get that follow-up shot back in there. But the exotic catalyst, guys, really does make a difference. Now, a question's gonna be brought up. What about the zoom cross? Is that zoom, despite it bumping our range up, mess with the weapon in that short to mid range? Well, I will admit there were times, especially up close, where when I would actually aim down sights, I felt like I was in the nostrils of my enemy. Now, that was when I was really, really close. And for the most part, this weapon already starts off at a base 16 zoom. That cranes it up to 19. It's not that bad. False Promises already sits at a plus 20 zoom. So if you're used to weapons like False Promises, which we talked very highly about, then Soros is going to feel just like that. But also the play style that both of those auto rifles have is similar in a lot of ways. As a matter of fact, if you have a gun roll False Promises, max range, range masterwork, etc., False Promises can actually reach up to that 40 meter range. So a decently rolled False Promises can actually surpass that of Soros. However, it doesn't have the functionality. It doesn't have the increase in damage, the damage perks that False Promises has. It's kill dependent. And on top of that, I think overall as a dueling weapon, Soros is just better. So is Soros back? It's OG form? Yes. And I find this to be very poetic of Bungie because we did some damage testing the other day. And by the way, feel free to check out that video. We went over the best damage dealers right now. And our conclusion was actually a return to the old meta. Whisper of the Worm is back. Galahorn is back. Sleeper Simulant is back. Those three exotic weapons are very good damage dealers in this sandbox. And it's interesting to see Bungie go out of the way to buff Soros here as if they're trying to present us that old meta. To take you back a little bit, to remind you of a time when Soros was literally the king inside of Crucible. Now, I'm not going to say Soros is going to wreck everything you come across. It's not. It's got a play style. It requires you to square up in those ranges that it's really comfortable in, preferably 38 meters and less. And it also requires you to play heavily into that increase in damage the deeper you go into that magazine. But if you do those things and you play patiently, Soros is going to do very well for you. My only complaint with Soros, and I mentioned it before on certain weapons, there seems to be a movement penalty in some ways, and that's natural because we cannot slot things like Icarus on our exotics. But Soros seems to not be, at least in this form, in its dual speed receiver form, a run and gun weapon, which was kind of a mental block there for me when using it back in the day with spinning up. You would just run around and shred everything. You could run and gun with spinning up. And even now, you could still run and gun with spinning up. But if you're going to use it in its dual speed receiver form, which I actually prefer now more than it's spinning up for. You want to lane up, play patiently, bait people into those 1v1s, and take advantage of that hefty amount of damage you can deal. Guys, that is our review there for Suros. By the way, we will be streaming all weekend long. There's a number of sub goals going on right now. I know we posted it yesterday, but essentially we've already broken the first one where we have to dye our hair. But we have other sub goals, such as the 34 Astral Runs, of which we are required to take a shot after every single run. We also have to start an anime channel if we break that goal, of which you you guys get to choose the name for and only fans which by the way i've already clarified we are not doing anything crazy on the only fans you might get some feet picks the tesla plus destiny i've had some questions about that one essentially we will be purchasing a tesla with obviously with the amount of subscriptions that you guys have gifted us but tesla has a gaming console within it we will stream and play destiny from within the tesla while autopilot is active now nah, i don't know about the autopilot but we will be streaming destiny inside of a tesla and the final sub goal is delete ass cross. To put it simply, I've put nearly 10,000 hours into my Destiny account. I've grinded for God rolls on God rolls, but if we happen to break that final goal, I will delete my ass cross account and proceed to start fresh, which means we would have to fit 10,000 hours between now and Witch Queen. So yeah, come check us out, guys. We'll be live all weekend. Hope to see you. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching, and as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.